All right, I don't know about you, but I am pretty excited because we finally have NDI output, individual NDI output in Zoom rooms, kind of. Anyway, it's official, it's here, it's out. And today we're gonna play with it. So welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan and thank you for joining. Thank you for those who have subscribed and liked these videos. I am enjoying making these and I hope you are too. So today we are going to play with the new Zoom rooms. Okay, so yeah, so it's not officially in the Zoom app yet, maybe, but it is uh, done using Zoom Rooms at the moment. So I have a laptop back here uh, running Zoom Rooms, and it's a paid bit of software which you can add onto your account. It's about $50, $60 a month, uh, roughly, wherever you are. And I have been using it uh, for the broadcast I've been use doing to get uh, 720p output on the broadcasts. It is a easy way of doing so. I've been trying to get a 1080p output through Zoom. Please respond to my emails. I've been trying for so long, please. Um, but it is a quick and easy way of doing that. Uh, and now we can use it to output up to three NDI outputs of individual people. And most importantly, with individual audio. Yes, finally. Uh, that has been one of the main reasons I have not been using it because our sound engineer is like, I just want to be able to control someone and mute them and unmute them and do individual EQs and compression. Anyway, so I've jumped into my Zoom portal. This is the one which is linked to the Zoom account, which I've got Zoom Rooms in. Now I'm going to go into Zoom Room Management. So on the side here, down to Room Management and Zoom Rooms. Once we're in here, we can have a look at our room. Now, what I did find, which I didn't realize actually was around, is you can actually launch a controller inside a browser so you don't actually have to have an ipad now at the time of this recording we don't have that option to do uh what we have the controls here so on the ipad we have the ability to do the zoom rooms but we do not have that on the web version they may fix this but at the time of recording it's not there but a little handy thing to have in the background for those playing with zoom rooms now we want to go into the zoom rooms account settings so once we're in our Zoom rooms, we're going to look into meetings. So we're going to Zoom rooms, click on our edit our room and gone into meetings. We're going to zoom down in here and here is our magic buttons. We are going to allow NDI usage in Zoom rooms. And if you want, you can separate the audio. I know I do, but if you don't want that, you just want to have the mix minus your input, feel free to use it this way. Uh, but this is how we enable this which is pretty exciting. So we are going to jump into Zoom itself and make a new meeting. Okay, so I'm going to make a new thing and excuse all the uh, video feedback in the background, but I'm gonna add my Zoom room. It's called Test Room, just because I was testing it anyway. Uh, so I'm gonna add my Zoom room to the call. I'm gonna invite it. Now on my uh, iPad here, it does not work with the, um, at the moment, it does not work with the way of controlling Zoom Rooms through the web API at the moment. So uh, do it on the iPad for now. So I'm gonna accept, and now we're gonna join the call. Uh, I'm gonna admit this. And now we have my Zoom Room, which is sitting back there uh, in the call. So I'm gonna come back here. We. In my initial testing, it seems that the Zoom room has to be the host for this to work. Now, there may be some other um, things where, because right now on this computer, which we're filming on, I am logged in onto the same account as the Zoom room. But for some reason, it doesn't seem to work. So I'm going to go into, going to go into Zoom and I'm going to add, um, make Zoom uh, the Zoom room the host. So now we're going to change the host. And now a magic little option has appeared. So under change view, we now have these three little dots. I just dropped the brightness of the thing. We have three outputs available to us to go to NDI. So all we do is click on that. I'm going to add myself to one of them. I'm going to add the Zoom room to another one just for tests. But um, at least we can test to see if this is actually working. All right, so we'll jump back into Zoom and it's going to have a little pop-up saying, by the way, this has now been live streamed on MBI. Woohoo! And MBI, NDI. Anyway, so we've got that now working. We've got a little icon in the corner, which makes me super happy. 
So I'm going to jump into OBS now. Uh, you can use whatever software if, is your preference, uh, vMix, any of those things. And we can now see I have two NDI sources here. So if I uh, look at the properties of this, I've got my laptop sitting there and it's now outputting two videos. Unfortunately, the name doesn't transfer, but anyway, we've got video one, uh, which is my computer here and video two, which is the output. And in terms of latency, it's not too bad. Now this laptop is struggling a little bit. It does seem to use a fair bit of power uh, in terms of computing power for this to work. But we now have individual control and individual audio from each setup. So right now you can see my source one is coming through. And if I unmute and click over there, we have source two coming in. Super amazing. I am so excited. This is great. There's a fun, there's a lot of things you can do now. So I have a deck link plugged into my um, computer, which I'm currently out putting out. So with this Ultra Studio plugged into my A10 Mini, I can actually get full screen uh, output. Now I can, I'm controlling OBS at the moment, so I can do whatever I want with any of these feeds and they are completely clean. No little things around the borders, nothing like that. It is all coming straight into my switcher. I'm not entirely sure um, why I'm not able to add the NDI outputs without being the host. Um, it shouldn't be too much of an issue if you're using this as a backend to a main Zoom call or a main broadcast to bring guests in. So set up your Zoom rooms. Unfortunately, Zoom rooms does take over your computer. Like this laptop back here, I can't do anything else on it now. It's just load up with Zoom rooms and it'll even load up when I boot up the operating system. So it's a little bit annoying in terms of that way because I've, I've, I've burnt a computer doing this, but I have also reduced three computers doing the three outputs, which is super exciting. We don't have to have a whole wall of computers now. So in theory, you can add a bunch of um, Zoom rooms together so you can get more than three out, more than three outputs. You can get three, six, nine, however many you've got. And yeah, it's really exciting. So wanted to put this together and show a practical example of this actually working. I'm really excited. This is gonna definitely change my uh, how I do things in production. I still prefer to use Video Ninja or OBS Ninja, depending on um, what you remember it as, um, because it just gives it a lot more control. But for say international broadcasts, international guests coming in and out, um, you know the quality is looking pretty good. I'm, I believe I'm still using only 720, and the ability of 1080 is is out there. So it's it's here. It's finally here. The latency is pretty good and it's using Zoom, which we're all used to now. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Ryan Summerfield. If you like the video, hit, give us a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you on the next one. Stay safe out there.